In this video, we're gonna cover some of the basic functions, features, and tips when using a Hummingbird Solix or Apex Fish Finder. This is a great starting point for anyone who is new to the Solix or Apex interface and is looking to understand the most used functions. There may be even a few tricks for you advanced users that you did not know about. Let's get into it. The first thing we're gonna talk about are sonar and chart views. This is the most important thing because these are how you customize your screen. Now we're gonna show you how to access them, how to create your own custom views and save them as favorites. Um, so now you can actually access your views up here. You can see these are the few that I have set up. Um, this is the one I'm currently using. I can switch over to a chart chart view, for example. And this is where you're gonna be able to find those right away as you're actively fishing or driving around. So now if you wanna create your own, uh, we're actually gonna hit home and we're actually gonna click on views here. This will show you all the custom views that uh, come standard with the unit. Um, quite a few here, then also some that I've created myself. Now, let's just say I wanna use a 2D and a down imaging view. I can click that, it'll pull it up for me. And now if I wanna save that, actually a fish right there. If I wanna save that, I actually open up my views tab and I can, let's say we go to the second page, I'm gonna press and hold and now that view is saved on the second page. And if I wanna access that at any point, I just hop over to the second page and I can tap this. And there's that view that I just found. Now, if I wanna create my own view, I'm gonna go back to home, views, new view, and here I have a couple different template styles, whether it's full screen, split screen, top and bottom, uh, three pane and four pane. Make this simple, we're just gonna pick a two pane here. You have the option between a 50-50 split and a 30-70 split. Now, the 30-70 split, um, there's only a few different sonar or chart options that can be as small as 30. It's chart, 2D, and down imaging. Um, but for this case, we're just gonna do 50 and 50, um, and we're gonna do chart and we're going to do down imaging. Now we can save this or we can name it something custom if we'd like. I'm just going to save it. Now it's going to save that right here. You can see it's selected. I can choose that and like I said if I want to make this a favorite I can come here press and hold save it as a favorite. Pretty simple. It's a nice thing about the Solix Apex interface allows you to customize these views to really what, what you would like to use. All right, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is shortcuts. And I'm gonna show you two of them that you're gonna use right away because they're easy and they're helpful. The first thing is when you're on a multi-pane view here, like here I have side imaging, mapping, and down imaging. If I wanna look at just side imaging, like let's just say we're idling over something, I can use two fingers, double press on side imaging, and it's automatically gonna pull this up in a full screen view. Super helpful if you wanna zoom in on something quick, whether it's you know your side imaging, uh, and then you can just do your two finger press and you're right back to your whatever view you were on before. Same thing like mapping, if I wanna take a look at this, here's these waypoints, I can quickly jump to that view and go right back to whatever I was viewing before. That's the first one, that's a must use, you'll use that all the time. The next one, so we just talked about views. So you can use two fingers and if you swipe to the side, it's gonna go through your favorite views that we have saved up here. So here's our chart chart. Next one's gonna be that three pane. So if I swipe, it's going to my three pane. So I can cycle through my views quickly without having to pull up the views menu. The next thing we're gonna show you is how to mark a waypoint. And there's a couple different ways you can do it, but the first way, the most basic way, you'll notice over here there's a mark button. Now if I hit that once, it's gonna pull up the, the waypoint mark option. I'm gonna hit it a second time, and it's gonna mark a waypoint directly beneath my boat. Now another thing you're gonna see, these favorites come up. Now these are totally customizable favorites, icons and colors. We have a full video that explains all of that, so I won't get into that here, but you you can customize those waypoints, but by just marking that, I can double press it twice. It's already gonna mark a waypoint. It knows I have one here. Now that's the one, one way to do it. It's gonna mark it directly beneath the boat. But there's another way you can do it. You can use your touch screen. Let's say we're driving over something and we see a rock pile or, or a brush pile or anything like that on my side imaging. I can take my finger, mark that object, mark a waypoint, same thing, my favorites are gonna pull up. So you can mark it actually on your sonar off to the side, on side imaging, or on your mapping if you see a point or something that looks interesting that you wanna fish. A similar option to using you know, the touch screen, I can actually use this joystick here. 
if I don't prefer touch screen, I can go find an object and double press my mark button. Same thing, favorites, can mark it that way as well. So the next thing we're gonna talk about, which is really important, and it's how to access your sonar or chart settings. So here on side imaging, we're gonna show you how you can access the main way to access your settings for side imaging for this example. Over here, there's a little menu key. You can press your menu key, and it's gonna pull up your sonar SI settings. Now, we have your sensitivity, our contrast, our chart speed, range, all of that, and other things that we can adjust all right here. Another way to access that via touch screen is just to hit the sonar screen up here same settings pop up for us there we can change sensitivity with the dial drop that down bring it back up we can adjust all of that right there another way to access some of your settings and capabilities for your sonar or your charts is this menu bar in the middle right here for example we have our color palettes for side imaging we can turn on water column sensitivity and other functions like that one really important thing when adjusting settings. So I'm gonna go back to a multi-pane view here. And one thing you'll notice, see around side imaging, there's this yellow bar that goes all the way around. That's the active pane. So if I wanna adjust sent, uh, settings for my side imaging, I need to make sure side imaging is active, which it is, which is what we just showed you. But now if I wanna adjust any kind of settings on my mapping, I have to activate that pane right there so that when I open up the menu, now I'm receiving settings that are related to my map. Same thing for down imaging. I can click over there, hit my menu. These are my settings for down imaging. So you have to pay attention to the active pane. Another way to change between active panes other than just touch, simply touching is this button right here. This will change between the panes. You'll see it highlight, even open up your sidebar here as well. But I back to side imaging and I can adjust my settings there. One other thing that's worth showing, so we have our side imaging pane here active, and if I wanna adjust sensitivity real quickly without having to open a menu, I simply take this dial, and I'm gonna adjust my sensitivity up or down. But now if I wanna adjust range, when I'm on a side imaging view, I can press the plus or minus icon, and that's gonna pull up my range options. So if I wanna crank that up to 120 feet, I can do that quickly without having to open up my menus. All right, so the next thing we're gonna show you is the sidebar, which you're gonna see right here on the left side of your screen. Now, we already showed you views. You can see that here. That would be your views. You also have this option here that actually shows data related to our transducer, so our depth, course, things like that. And then the bottom one, this is actually a trolling motor prop. You can see we're connected to our um, Minn Kota Altrex through the One Boat Network, so we can pull that data up, control our trolling motor, hit spot lock, anything like that. If you have raptors or talent and shallow water anchors, that would show up here as well, but that's the sidebar. All right, the next thing we're gonna show you that's a really cool, it's a unique thing for Solix and Apex, and it's called Sonar Scroll. So now, let's say we're looking at side imaging here, and we saw something back behind us that we really wanted to either mark a waypoint on or go back and fish. On Solix, I can simply scroll back and see history. So we had some fish here right on the edge of a, a weed line. Let's say I mark a waypoint there. I'm gonna mark that waypoint. I'm gonna go back, and guess what? That waypoint is gonna show up behind the boat, right where we went over it. A really cool feature, being able to scroll back, look at history. You know, once you roll over something, it's not gone forever. We can actually scroll back. You can see these fish right here. That's a pretty cool feature. So the next thing we're gonna show you is how to take a screenshot. You know, you've probably seen Humminbird Mega Imaging screenshots all over social media, websites, articles, things like that. If you wanna take your own, it's really simple. So next to our waypoint button over here is a go-to button, and it also has a camera on it. To take a screenshot, all you have to do is press and hold this button, and it's gonna take a screenshot, and it's gonna tell you that it's captured that screenshot, and it's going to save it. Now, if we wanna go look at our screenshots that we've taken in the past, all you have to do is hit home, go down to images, and you're gonna see your collection of screenshots. Here's that screenshot we just took. You can see this big rock pile out here. Last thing we're gonna show you is standby and how to put a Solux or an Apex into standby. Obviously, you may wanna use this to conserve battery or um, avoid interference between multiple units or anything like that. Um, and you can press the power button and tap standby. That'll put the unit down into standby. 
and you can press power to bring it back. Another simple way to do it, even quicker way, double press power right into standby. That's it for this video. Hopefully that was helpful for you and you learned something about the Solix or Apex interface and maybe a tip or two that you can take home and actually use on out on the water. If you have any questions, whether it's sonar or fish finder related, um, please drop us a comment below or if you have suggestions for other videos, we'd love to hear them. And thanks for watching.